two in the nation. So another one-two matchup was highly pleasing to the vocal home state crowd. And for most of the first half, the Warriors proved to be a match for the powerful Wolfpack. State bolted to an initial 10-2 lead in the first four minutes behind their usual starring combo of Thompson and Burleson. Marquette coach Al McGuire finally was able to restore order at 12 all. Five points in 33 seconds helped the Milwaukeeans keep pace. The league changed hands seven times in this fiercely competitive struggle for National College basketball supremacy. With only two minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first half, Marquette held a 28-27 advantage. But then, lightning struck, attracted by Coach McGuire. Warrior Marcus Washington was called for charging. McGuire lived up to his reputation for temper by protesting vehemently. He was rewarded for his effort by being charged with a technical foul. David Thompson, who was to be voted the tournament's outstanding player in all three charity tosses. And then Burleson scored on the technical position to turn a five-point play to North Carolina State's advantage. But McGuire was not to be denied. Less than a minute later, Warrior freshman Bo Ellis was called for goaltending on a Phil Spence attempt. McGuire charged the court again. The referees promptly awarded Spence the basket, a free throw, and a new possession, as the rules for technical fouls dictate. The Wolfpack alertly cashed in on three of these five windfall points. The combination of these gifts from the Marquette bench put State comfortably into the lead, going into the locker room 39-30. by Mo Rivers and Monty Toe. State jumped to a shockingly quick 45-30 advantage in the first two minutes out of the locker room. By the 15 minutes left mark, the lead had grown to a staggering 52-33. But Marquette was not going to fold. The Warriors rallied strongly behind Marcus Washington and Lloyd Walton to cut the margin to 46-55 with 10-13 remaining. But State still led 59-47 at the eight-minute mark on a jumper by Mo Rivers and a tip-in by the speedy Dave Thompson. Marquette was shackled by the tenacious Wolfpack defense led by Rivers, Toe, and Stoddard as well as the ever-present Thompson which consistently kept Marquette out of effective scoring range. The Warriors won the rebounding derby 43 to 34 and pulled more turnovers 23 to 18, but it was in vain. As against UCLA two nights earlier, it was the Wolfpack's poise that really counted. Strongly pressured by Marquette's resurgence, as they watched a 19-point lead dwindle to nine, the Carolinians continued to play a smooth, even game of ball control. They forced the clock-conscious Milwaukeeans into several fouls, and in the highly charged atmosphere of the packed Coliseum, they kept their cool. Hey, 
By now, the North Carolina State lead was just too much to overcome, even by Al McGuire's never-say-die attitude. Mark Kent was playing its heart out, but with an increasingly obvious sense of desperation. The triumphant crowd sensed the victory and counted the clock down for the champion. A sweet 76-64 conquest and undisputed position as number one. So David Thompson of the Wolfpack derailed UCLA. Did anybody in Greensboro really realize it that night? But NC State ending the UCLA dynasty, the Bruins would come back and win again in 75. But from 1973 until the present, no team has been able to repeat as NCAA champions. NC State winners in 74. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at the Final Four from 74 down on Tobacco Road. I'm Bob Lee.